More Android phones means more dog fights. How's it going, guys? I'm Aaron from PhoneDog.com. It's Monday. It's kind of a boring day. You're sitting at work. You're like, I need something to do. Well, this phone dog dog fight is going to help me, my friends. I've got the Samsung Galaxy S3 right here, and I've got the Samsung Galaxy Note over here. This one's the international version coming soon to AT&T, and then the Galaxy Note's over here and available now on AT&T. They're packing special specs. Which one is the best must-have Android phone? Is it the one with the big display and the S Pen? Or maybe the one that's brand new with an awesome camera and a 4.8 inch HD display. We'll find out, but first, some love to Best Buy Mobile for hooking us up with phones like this for use in our One Paw Bandit giveaway game. When you go into Best Buy Mobile, you'll walk out working. They'll help you set up your Galaxy S3 when they come around, and the Galaxy Note. They'll help you set up your email, your web, your contacts, your S Pen settings, your screen settings, and more at Best Buy Mobile. Let's take a look. Galaxy S3, Galaxy Note. Which one's the best? We'll find out, starting right now. More Android phones, that's the name of the game. More high-end hot Android phones, it's dogfight time. And this just happens to be two Samsung Android phones that are pretty hot. The Samsung Galaxy S3 here. Now this is the international Galaxy S3, and there are some differences in the specs between the international build and the one that's coming soon to the United States. So you do get some changes from overseas as it crosses the Atlantic or Pacific, depending on which way you're coming from. If it's coming from South Korea, I guess it would cross the Pacific. But hey, you know what? That's peanuts to this whole dogfight. Let's talk about it now. 1.4 gigahertz quad-core Exynos processor in the international version. It has a 4.8 inch display on this device. Super AMOLED HD display. An 8 megapixel camera on the back with 1080p HD video recording. A 1.9 megapixel front-facing camera. Android 4.0 with a new version of TouchWiz. So both of these are running TouchWiz. This is running Ice Cream Sandwich. This is running Gingerbread, Android 2.3. And you'll see the differences in TouchWiz. So both are running TouchWiz, but this is the new TouchWiz or TouchWiz 2012. Some people are calling it TouchWiz Nature UX, but Samsung, at least all the people I've talked to both on the PR side and on the Samsung exec side, haven't referred to it as Nature UX. So I'm going to hold off on that for now. TouchWiz 4.0 over here, which is the older version of TouchWiz uh, on the Galaxy Note, which is available now at AT&T. This is packing HSPA Plus connectivity, 21 megabits per second over here, 2,100 milliamp hour battery as well. Now, when it comes to the states, it's changing up the processor a little bit. A 1.5 gigahertz dual core Snapdragon S4 processor coming over on the Galaxy S3 uh, when it comes to the states. 4G LTE capabilities being put in this device, and then HSPA Plus on T-Mobile. Uh, coming into the States as well. So some minor changes, the actual physical button staying the same uh, between the international version and the US version. So that's something that's kind of interesting. Uh, it's gonna be available in a couple of different colors. It's gonna be available in white and then a pebble blue. And then if you're on AT&T, it's coming soon in a red color as well. Galaxy Note over here on AT&T, this thing's packing a 1.5 gigahertz dual core Snapdragon S3 processor, a 5.3 inch display. So take a look at the display difference here between these two devices, that's roughly side by side. You can see a lot more screen real estate on the, uh, the Galaxy Note. 5.3, 4.8 over here, but this is also a Super AMOLED HD display. Then you got an eight megapixel camera on the back with 1080p HD video recording, a front-facing shooter, and then you have, like I said, Android 2.3 over here with TouchWiz version 4. It's packing a big 2,500 milliamp hour battery uh, as well. So both of these have pretty decent sized batteries. That's something I really like about both of these phones. Android's a battery hog, and then when you get stuff like 4G LTE, it's even a more notorious battery hog. So it's nice to see that over here. Out of the box, you get a couple of different things. Keep in mind, again, this is the international version, so you don't see any of the uh, AT&T stuff that you would see on the device when it most likely comes to the US. We'll take a look at those when they come in and when they're available, but for now, out of the gate, you get Dropbox, and uh, that's about it. Everything else you see on here is stuff I've installed, but you're gonna notice some differences, for example, between the music player over here, and then take a look at music over here and you can see icon differences, obviously optimized for ice cream sandwich, some minor changes there uh, as well. You have a shortcut up here for your downloaded applications, then you get quick access between your apps and your widgets. Now one thing I really like over here, regardless of how you scroll through, it stays on apps until you physically click on widgets. Over here out of the gate, you get the AT&T stuff, which you can uninstall, which is nice. So AT&T Family Map, AT&T Navigator, AT&T Ready to Go, as you can see up here. And then you get Live TV, you get My AT&T, you get a Polaris Office, a couple of different pre-installed applications, and then YP Mobile out of the gate. Now I can again come down here and take a look, press and hold on the dots, and I can scroll back and forth between my applications here. And same thing over here, I can scroll back and forth between both my widgets and my apps as well. 
uh, over here, I've got to press and hold, and then I can easily scroll back and forth. So again, quad-core Exynos over here, coming to the States with a dual-core Snapdragon S4 processor, so we'll take a look at some of the differences when it comes in, like I said. But down here, you've got four capacitive buttons on this device, and then you have two capacitive buttons, which they're hard to see on this white. You have menu, and then back, and then you have a physical home button, which when you press down on it, it brings up your recent applications. You can go from there to Task Manager, or you can do your typical ice cream sandwich thing, where you remove it and go from there. You don't get that all uh, that option over here in Gingerbread, but what you do get is seven home screens on both of these devices. And I'll tell you, you know, they're both relatively speedy. There's a noticeable speed difference, obviously, between the Galaxy S3 and the Note. This one's much faster. The quad-core processor performs much better. And then, of course, it's optimized with, uh, with Ice Cream Sandwich. That's something to keep in mind. Notification bar here as well. A little bit of a difference. You can see the shortcuts up here, and you get quite a few shortcuts on the international version. You get Wi-Fi, GPS, mute, screen rotation, and you can kind of see all the way across. Mobile data, uh, sync, driving mode, and more. Up here, all you get is five shortcuts. There's no ability to scroll back and forth. But then you have your notifications bar, and one thing I really like about Ice Cream Sandwich, and I'll tell you a really funny one, actually. Turn these off and back on so you can see. The biggest difference when you're working with Ice Cream Sandwich is the ability to come down here and hit the menu button. So let's say you get an email or a text message. You don't have to go all the way in. You can just scroll back down and access those. And you can either swipe to remove them or you can uh, read up on them. Over here, that's the hardest thing to remember when you go from Ice Cream Sandwich. You can't actually access the notification bar from the menu. And you also see some different options in menu as well. On that topic, I want to show you the customization of both of these devices because they both have TouchWiz, they both have widgets, they both have some pretty decent customization choices. But take a look here at the home screen, the lock screens rather. You got the weather here, you got this over here, and I'm going to show you the difference. I have some new stuff down here as well. The Galaxy S3 has a wealth of different little software goodies, which to me really puts it ahead of other devices, not just other competitor devices, but also other devices in the Samsung lineup because they've got some killer devices or some killer uh, software options here. And I absolutely love this one. This is a big one for me, battery percentage indicator. This is something Samsung's putting on all of their devices when they upgrade to, uh, to Android 4.0 or if they have it out of the box, that physical... Uh, percentage indicator that comes out of the gate. So if you have a device like the Galaxy S2 on T-Mobile that's just been upgraded, you can take advantage of that too. It's a really nice touch, something I absolutely like. But then you get a lot of cool software features over here that you don't necessarily get on the Galaxy Note. Now the Galaxy Note makes up for it with the S Pen and the bigger display, so it's nice to have. But let's go down here and take a look, for example, at a screen display. Let's go into lock screen. I can show the weather on the lock screen if I want to. I can change the weather settings. I can change the clock and weather position. So we can move that to the bottom, for example, and then turn this off and back on. And then I have the clock and the weather down here at the bottom. But what you get over here, you get a ton of options that I think are really cool on this device. So we'll come down here to uh, locate, actually we'll come down here to security. We'll go to lock screen options. And you can see a ton of different options. Information ticker, which is what you saw at the bottom. The weather, the ripple effect, the dual clock when I'm roaming camera quick access, and then wake up and uh, Samsung unlock. So check out the review of the Galaxy S3 if you want more in-depth uh, ideas as to what those features do. Take a look in the Galaxy S3 review. Take a look at my 30-day challenge because I am carrying this device as my personal phone just like I actually did with the Note as part of a 30-day challenge. So take a look at those videos on YouTube and on the site as well. But you can see here a lot of different choices and one of my favorites that I found myself using on a pretty regular basis. Come here, swipe down, hold down, and then move it like that and then you get easy access to the camera, which is a really nice touch. We'll cover those in part two, so you can take a look at the in-depth camera features on both of these devices. Now, the real winner over here on the Samsung Galaxy Note, the S Pen. So obviously, you have your volume rocker over here, your power button on the right side, your micro USB charging port on the bottom, and your 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on the top. Pretty similar setup here, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, power button and volume rocker, and then micro USB charging port all in the same place. A little bit of a different button configuration on the front, but mostly the same. The real difference here, the S Pen. Now this is a capacitive input stylus, which you can use on the screen, you can use to draw, and it's a really nice touch. So you can come in here, for example, let's say we're on the web, and we'll take a look actually at phonedog.com, which is right there, and we'll go ahead and load it up over here so you can take a look at both. And then phonedog.com is loading up. So let's say you know, I'm scrolling through the page and I really want to send an article to a friend of mine. So we'll get this loaded up thanks to AT&T's 4G LTE on this device. So let's say, you know what, I love PhoneDog. I'm going to press this button and I'm going to snap a picture. There we go. And so I'm going to snap a picture and it's going to bring it up in S Memo, and then I can easily draw on it. So if I love this article, I'm like, this is the best article ever. Hi there. I can draw on it and then I can save it. And from there, I can save it and email it to somebody else. I can email it to a friend, a colleague. I can say, fix this, whatever, and draw on it 
and uh, it's a really nice beneficial tool. Now this is something you may write off as you know kind of a niche kind of thing, nothing that people would use on a regular basis. I beg to differ, you know, it's funny because I carried this for 30 days and uh, after about 15 days I started using it to take notes and I found it really beneficial while I was taking notes and meetings, when I was on conference calls I quickly jot stuff down and I'm gonna come in here so you can see what it looks like as well, S memo, and I can come in here and do an individual sketch and say, hey phone dog, and of course you get a couple of different options here. It's terrible writing, but you get the ability to change it around, change some of the colors. You can do a lot of different things on this device in addition to screenshots. Now one really cool screenshot feature over here, not sure why the uh, internet's not working, but love this screenshot feature. I can take my palm and swipe, and you'll see how it captures and says saving screenshot. Really beneficial tool there. All you do is swipe it across, and you're good to go. So again, back to software things, there are a lot of functional, or a lot of really nifty uh, software tools on this device that make it a really functional unit. So, and I'll show you a couple more actually. We'll go into settings here. I'm trying to jump back and forth between these two devices so you can kind of see some of the features. One of my favorites, it's called Smart Stay. And what you do is when you enable it, it automatically looks and detects when you're staring at the display and it keeps it bright. So if you're reading a book and you're on, you let's say, page whatever, page 200, and you seem to get stuck on it. You're reading and you're like, I really want to understand this. Well, the screen won't turn off. If you have it set to 30 seconds or 45 seconds, it'll stay on if it detects that you're looking at the screen. Again, you get a lot of customization choices in here like font style, font size. Much like previous Samsung devices, I can come in here and change the font size and the style. And like I said here, battery percentage is available right there. Really nice touch on all counts.